Hello everyone. I want to talk to you today about conquering your fear of public speaking or sometimes called communication apprehension. I wanted to reinforce the notion that everyone, even the most experienced speakers, gets nervous. The quote that I had shared with you on Blackboard under announcements was the Mark Twain famous quote about there are only two types of speakers in the world, the nervous and the liars, and I truly believe that. There might be an a minute amount of the population that doesn't get too nervous, but I think everyone does. And I've always been pleasantly surprised when I hear a famous person such as Adele or Dave Matthews um, talk about their own speech communication apprehension and how they get nervous, some of them even to the point of throwing up, how people like Barbara Streisand is a person who constantly gets stage fright and gets sick. So it happens. They might look polished and professional and like they've done it a million times, but they get nervous too. So it is a completely normal thing that happens to us. We have bodies that are complex and when we are feeling nervous feelings, they like to tell us that we're feeling those feelings. So if we are alive, we're going to have a nervous system that gets revved up by the notion of having to do something that feels a little bit out of our comfort zone. The symptoms of fear that you might be familiar with include things like getting flushed or blushing. I have had students who begin to blush from their neck and up on, and it spreads along their clavicle or their chest and people get white knuckles, they rock, they fidget, they tap, they sweat, they shake, they get an upset stomach to the point of feeling like they're going to vomit or actually vomiting, although that has never happened in any of my classes that I've taught. No one has ever fainted either. So we have these feelings of almost feeling like we have the flu, that we're going to be sick, and those are completely normal. Um, there is a mnemonic device, and I'm sorry my screen is not allowing you to see the, the last one, but it's called the Planks of Confidence, and this can help you to feel more confident in the speaking that you are going to be doing. So number one includes content, being able to speak about something that you enjoy, that you feel very passionate about, and you think that your audience would also be interested in. So picking topics that you like and that would interest your audience. Having some kind of an organizational pattern. When you begin writing your speeches, you start with a rough draft and then you write a formal draft that you give to me. But you're never ever reading that formal draft to your audience because we don't want to be read to. So you are using the outline to give yourself a structure for the points that you want to make and this ensures that you are providing content in a way that's easier to follow. So you do that in the form of a keyword outline which is just words and phrases that you take from your formal outline to help you remember what you want to say. And the only time that I want you to really write anything out and read it is if you have a quote or a statistic that you need to maintain the accuracy of. F in the Planks of Confidence stands for friendliness. Going up there, putting a smile on your face as an audience member, smiling back at the speaker. Friendliness can go a long way. If you've ever walk, worked um, on the phone systems, if you've ever done customer service, they will tell you to put a smile in your voice because oftentimes it does come through the telephone wires if you are smiling. So it also goes along with the idea of fake it till you make it. You might not feel confident, but if you look friendly and if you look confident, that can come along with it. Making in first impression, or the impression is I, so being aware of how you are presenting yourself, grooming and clothing, this goes along with when you have a job interview, knowing that you want to dress your best so that you feel your best and that you look and feel um, how you want your audience to see you. Dedication means practicing and practicing and practicing. I have had students tell me over and over again in the years that I've been teaching speech that they wish they would have practiced more. That is the most common reflection comment that I get in all of the speeches that I didn't practice it enough, I didn't feel confident in my material, and if I would have just practiced it a few more times I would have done better. And it might feel frivolous and it might feel time consuming to do it, but especially if you're doing a speech that is three to five minutes long and you you know, take a half an hour of your time to practice it 10 times, that's not a large chunk of your time. And if it ensures that you know the content, you know the order that it's coming, you're going to feel and do much better. E stands for empathy, so know what others are feeling and know that your audience is also giving a speech. 
I love my speech classes in that all my students are very supportive of each other. If somebody makes a mistake, there's nobody in my audience that's pointing fingers and laughing or throwing tomatoes at one another. We all go through the same thing. We all experience this fear and this dread. And so when you're up there, know that the audience members who are watching you are not sitting there waiting for you to fail. They're rooting for you to succeed. N stands for newness, applying some originality to your speech topics. I have asked you in your first speech to pick a topic that is of interest to you, and as I had written in the instruction sheet, picking something that a college level audience would find interesting. So it shouldn't be something that's just every day that most of us already know, trying to apply some new material to really give that added advantage of interest to your audience. Conviction means believing in what you say, especially when you get into your persuasive speeches, being able to speak with conviction, back up what you've done, what you've researched, and convey that conviction in your voice. And the one that you can't see, not see on the screen is E for enthusiasm, so getting fired up. Again, if you think about going to a speaker who is like Mr. Uh, robotic teacher on Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you know, it's, it's hard to stay engaged. But if you have enthusiasm in your voice and in your presentation and in your topic, that will come through in your presentation. Positive nervousness. There is such a thing as positive nervousness. nervousness and we, we are nervous because we care about what other peop people think. And so the good things about it is that it will activate your adrenal supply. And so you're going to feel a little bit like you plus some, like you've taken a little shot of espresso or uh, an energy caffeine drink. It makes your eyes shine. It usually gives you a little bit of a sharper edge. And it will give you a little bit more respectful attention. Um, if you appear to care and be a little nervous, your audience knows that you care that they care. Um, and it does create an atmosphere that has a bit of drama in it. And I know some people are like, I don't want any drama in my life. But that little edge of nervousness can also be interpreted as excite excitement. So be into your project, in your topic, into your into what you're talking about. Prepare, again, meaning practicing several times. I'm a big proponent of PMA, which is positive mental attitude. If you believe you will succeed, you probably will. If you believe you fail, you probably will. Again, practice and don't think of it as a performance so much as you're sharing information with a group of colleagues who are interested in that same information. Know your audience and setting. So for most of the speeches you do, you're going to be in a more natural setting that you're comfortable with. You're going to be in your homes or in your workplaces or wherever you've chosen to deliver your speeches. Listen to what your audience has to say. This is easier when you have a live audience, but paying attention to their body language, if they are setting up, if they're looking at you, if they have crossed and closed off body language, if they look confused, you want to be able to address those issues. And that's the downside of having an online speech class in that you can't see as you're delivering what your audience is doing so that you could stop and reiterate something or explain something in more detail. Welcome a little bit of that positive anxiety or nervousness and if you make mistakes just keep moving. Smile. Don't apologize. Don't explain it. Um, this reminds me of when I was in piano as, as a child. I played the piano, I did recitals, and I had a really bad habit of when I made a mistake I would kind of plunk my head down and it was obvious to the people watching me that I had made a mistake. If I had just kept playing, people would not have noticed it, some people anyway. So don't draw attention to it, just keep going. We all flub up. I've flubbed up a couple times in this recording already, but if you focus on that, that will be what your audience remembers. So some exercises that you can do are to take a communications class, which is what you're doing right now. The more exposure you have to it, the easier it will get. Don't fight it. Understand that being nervous is just part of it and know that once you're done that nervousness will go away. It's not permanent. You can take a brisk walk before your a presentation. Just doing a quick once around the block gets your body loosened up and be aware of how you're sitting. Don't cross all of your extremities. So don't cross your legs. Don't cross your arms. Make sure that the blood is flowing to everywhere in your body. Uh, take deep breaths, obviously. Um, that extra shot of oxygen into your brain is good for you. As you are not crossing your legs and not crossing your arms, let your arms dangle. And uh, you see athletes doing this all the time. I, I 
immediately think of the basketball players who kind of are jumping around and shaking their hands out before a game begins. They are doing those things also to build excitement and to get rid of some of the nervous energy that happens before any kind of performance, whether that's academic or athletic. So twirling your wrist, shaking your fingers, doing anything that increases that blood supply, taking those deep breaths, and use visual aids to help occupy the attention of your audience. I advise that you don't use a visual aid to take the attention off of yourself when you're speaking, but there are parts of your presentations that might benefit from a visual aid and will give the audience something to look at if you're just nervous at people looking at you for the entire time. And lastly, try some of these power poses. In this clip I've given you examples on the top row there of things that you should and can do to increase your confidence or I believe it cre increases your testosterone levels. So those poses that imply power and dominance and poses on the lower row are poses that imply not as much confidence or insecurity. So widening yourself up, putting your hands on the hip, doing the Wonder Woman pose, putting your arms behind your your head, doing kind of the, the boss pose, if you will. Those are all poses of power that will increase your confidence. And I got that information from this TED Talk that I'd encourage you to check out. It's one of the most viewed TED Talks there are. And this is by Amy Cuddy. And it's a 20-minute TED Talk talking about some of the studies that have been done showing that power posing can help you be more confident and can help you in the workplace. So check that out if you have time um, and try those power poses if you don't do them before your speeches, but if you have maybe an interview, go into the restroom of the, the company you're applying for and take those deep breaths, uh, twirl your wrists, and do some of those superwoman poses in the, in the bathroom stall. All right, I hope that helped and gave you some tips on things that you can do to eliminate or at least lessen some of that communication apprehension. Good luck and happy practicing.